Greetings to all of you from the Mass General Hospital, and I hope you all stay safe uh, in the middle of this uh, pandemic uh, that we're witnessing in every single hospital in the U.S. Um, here are some thoughts that I wrote after my first night about 10 days ago or two weeks ago in the ICU in a unit full of, um, of many sick patients with COVID-19. I hope uh, some of these thoughts will be useful. I am sure some of them will be wrong, but I'm just going to read you the email I wrote as uh, I sent it about 10, 14 days ago. First thing is the, our ICU nurses are amazing. So are our ICU fellows. The morale is very high. These are very sick patients. We have 16 of 16 COVID positive patients. They are all intubated by the end of my shift. 11 patients were prone. The story is always the same. Smoldering white coal, mild coal, then they get worse at five days, then they get, they quickly deteriorate to intubation for hypoxemia. The age range is from 30s to 80s. The young ones have morbid obesity, COPD, diabetes, hypertension, or immunosuppression. From a respiratory point of view, I strongly believe this is not ARDS as we know it. The compliance is fine. Ardsnet is being used unanimously, occasionally leading to polypharmacy of sedation. I mean mega doses of propofol, presidex, ketamine, dilaudid, and other agents to achieve vent synchrony. This could become a problem. I think um, we should be uh, exploring other ways of mechanical ventilation, like such as SIMV or APRV. In any way, few days later, I did notice that uh, many of the patients start getting better as the cytokine storm um, goes away. Um, so stay the course with them and then many of them starting anyway and we have extubated many. Uh, since the compliance is good, do a best PEEP trial when you can. I think you'll be surprised a lot of patients require less PEEP than you would think. Proning works by the end of my shifts. Uh, like I told you, 11 of the 18 patients were prone. It dramatically improved two of the four we proned overnight with P2F ratios going instantaneously from 200s to 400s. The more important news, the nurses are pros at proning. It goes by protocol so smooth for the credit. Chest x-rays look horrific. From a sedation point of view, again, try to avoid polypharmacy, but it does seem like these patients are requiring a lot more sedation than your usual patient. Cardiovascular, most patients are in shock, requiring somewhere between 2 and 12 of levofed. I added vasopressin to those at 5 of levofed or higher, and I think they liked it. The shock looked classic distributive, and I, do not, I did not feel that any of the patients had a cardiogenic component. I think if we have better strategies of sedation, some of this will be better. I recommend that we do not put the patients on Presidex and we save this for the time that they are getting better so we can extubate them. Bundle your procedures, put the central line, arterial line, OG tube and NG tube as soon as they arrive. The gastrointestinal, most patients have a wicked ileus despite a good bowel regimen, maybe partially related to the polypharmacy. I added lactulose to almost all patients and pushed trophic feeds or advancing feeds even when prone. By uh, And now that I'm about two weeks into taking care of these patients, when you get their bowels working, they tolerate tube feeds very well. Infectious. Most patients have a normal white count with predominant neutrophilia is really because you have lymphopenia and it's not about neutrophilia. Superimposed pneumonia starts happening about day four or five later. Uh, it did, it, I did have uh, a few patients with superimposed pneumonia. If that happens, do vancomycin and cefepime. If you have new fevers, leukocytosis, and increased sputum production as usual. We are giving all patients five days of hydroxychloroquine, azithromycin, and ceftriaxone. Some patients are receiving IL-6 inhibitors uh, through a trial. Some patients are receiving remdesivir as trials. And statins, we add them selectively based on some uh, non-convincing evidence that it does decrease the inflammatory response. Stop your statin if your CKs are increasing above 500. Finally, hematologically, several patients have a clear hypercoagulopathy. 
and um, we are working on a protocol but i suggest if your patient starts clotting their lines or having a pe or dvt and their d-dimers are escalating rapidly in the thousands that you do go on a heparin drip with a goal of 70 200 and consult your hematology team again uh, for everybody and all our colleagues across the uh, the country stay well stay safe and i hope some of this information would be useful for you at the bedside take care